okay, all right. Sorry. All right, that's okay. Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. Super excited for this video. We've come to Goodwin Orchids in, uh, where are we, Leesburg, mm -hmm. Florida. Uh, beautiful, as you can see right from the beginning of this video. I'm with Donna, one of the co-owners. Uh, can you give us some history of your, of your nursery here? Well, where we're located on South Street in Leesburg, which is uh -huh. actually State Road 44. Mm -hmm. My husband's grandparents got here in 1919. Wow. And so uh -huh. they've been right here since then. And right. Dwayne's dad did orchids where you park or where there were old greenhouse beds. Uh -huh. But we built these houses starting in the 90s. Wow. We'd love for people to come out. We uh -huh. live on the properties, but it's always best to give me a call before you come. Yes. Um, but a lot of times the gates open, I ship. I ship, mm -hmm. I've got the ag stamp shipped to Texas and California, right. you got uh, uh, uh. no nematodes, so I've got that ag stamp and it's, okay. we mainly though specialize in Vanda orchids. Okay, so you're, again, you're open, you're open to the public, but yes. give us, give her a call first before you, before you just show up and then you're, you're shipping online, so you have a website. I do, goodwinorchids.com. Okay, I'll link it down below. you'll yeah. see some of the big plants around here. Dwayne had me make monstervandas.com. Mm -hmm. Monstervandas.com. Yeah, okay. so All that right. gets you to us too. Well, let's take a look at some. Okay. So you might hear fans in the background, and we'll explain the fans uh, in a few minutes when we talk about cultural requirements. Uh, you guys grow specifically Vanda orchids. That's right. Right, okay. Right, right. Can you explain... Uh, the difference between vandas maybe and some other orchids. Okay, okay. there, there are the van, oh, the vanda. The orchids are the largest plant group. Okay. There's over twenty five thousand species. Right. So vanda's part of that, mm -hmm. and they're either terrestrial or epiphytic. These are epiphytes. Yes. So you see these crazy roots coming down. They'd be hugging a tree. Right. And it'd be hanging off a tree like that. Right. But not really. Uh, te you know, they're, they're just holding on to the tree. They're not really. That's in right. A they're not a parasite. Right. It not a parasite. It doesn't bother it. It's an epiphyte. Okay. And uh, there are quite a few epiphytic orchids, but the vandas are definitely ones, and they don't need a pot right. or a potting medium. So some of them are fragrant. Yeah. Some of them are not. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. How old is this one behind us? Because this is one of the monster vandas. This is the monster. <laughs> yes, right. There you go up there. That's <laughs> Mama, and she's right. up there, and she's getting ready to spike again. I can't even get up there and take off the old spikes. Right. She's about 17 years old now. Okay. And then anything coming off of one of these plants is a baby. Because right. the vandas grow monopodial, straight up. Gotcha. So anything coming off. So here's older babies, like this one here is a baby that's blooming. But if you look a little higher up there, there's a little baby coming out. So they can have babies all the time, whenever. It's up to her to decide. So. Okay, and so how often, I know it's going to be different, because they're, they're different species of vandas. Right. So vanda is, is a genus within the orchid family, mm -hmm. of which there are probably close to 900 genuses. And then twenty eight thousand or something species. So that's we're why there's orchid society. Right, right. You gotta and, learn all and, this. And, and arguably, some <laughs> aster folk, aster person is going to say the aster family's bigger, but they're they're okay. neck and neck. They're, okay. ne they're neck and neck, but way <laughs> ahead of any other other groups, right? I mean, well, there's orchids on every continent except Antarctica. Right. It's wild. It, it's wild. Okay. So, uh, how often are they blooming? I know they're different species, so they're going to be different. Typically, right. in what we grow, and and these. Particular vandas are called strap leaf vandas. So if you remember okay. the old razor and strap, gotcha. they're nice and wide open. Right. Um, they generally bloom twice a year. But okay. there's others, when they're a little bit smaller bloom, they'll pick up a, a cycle or two. So you may get them three or four times a year. Right. And a few that do even more than that. But generally, these big, showy flowers are twice a year. Okay, so how old does the plant have to be? If you take one of these babies off, how long could you expect for you're going to get flowers? Well, now, if you're actually talking about a baby from the bottle, okay. it takes five years. Uh -huh. And some of these others above my head, that's a typical five-year-old plant. And at Goodwin Orchids, we just bring in blooming size. Right, okay. Because why wait? <laughs> so right. we, And they come from Thailand. So those are ready to bloom within the first year we get them. But on the babies of the plant, I've seen them blooming with their mama because they're getting so much right. strength from her own root system. Yeah. They'll bloom without even the first root. But if you took that baby off, it would die. They gotta have at least three roots the size of drinking straws to really live. Okay. On nice. Their own. Nice. So 
this is about the shipping size that you're typically sending this out. This is a first time blooming Vanda. Okay. And um, here come the flowers. So this one's headed to Texas today. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's in, you, you have these little plastic containers down here at the bottom. They it's just get basically started support. there. Support for the hanger. Right. Because you don't gotcha. even need a basket. But you got to bring it in and out if it's freezing outside, which we just experienced in Leesburg over Christmas. Right. So, uh, okay, so what kind of maintenance would somebody expect to have? Well, I know that if this thing was headed to Wisconsin, it would be holding the door saying, no, 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 because <laughs> they got to work a whole lot harder than we do. Right. So if you're warm and tropical, these are no-brainers hang outside year-round. Right. If I'm shipping to Ohio, I hope you've made a plant room and add some more humidity. Right. And then you got to think about how am I going to water that thing? Because we use a garden hose right here in right. the greenhouse. Right. We water from yes. overhead. You're going to put it in the shower or something you know, and right. when you're cold. But in the spring and summer, they'll be outside most of the time. And you never have to repot. Yeah. Ever. Beautiful. Never. So, so, but in the shade, right? Broken filtered light Broken, would be best. Right. And um, see, we're the sunshine state. So Florida, it's so easy here. So if any of you are up north and moving down here, you'll, it's wonderful. It'd be right. so easy. Yeah, and you're coming in on my drive, you got them hanging in the trees. They're hanging in the trees. <laughs> they're hang, they're and, hanging and in the And those made it through the freeze, but it, they were protected by big trees. So. Okay. About how low would you let them go outside? Well, see, this is where it diff it's again. If you're in Florida and we're having a short, little, brief freezing time, uh -huh. you know, about 38, they're still mm -hmm. okay outside. Right. But if you're in Iowa and it's 38 every night, no, you can't right. do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, right. so we're yeah. back up to sweating today and it's going to be right. 80 tomorrow and it's January the 18th or something. Right. So you're saturating the entire plant basically three times a week, four times a week? Exactly. Okay. And uh, for, I don't know if you can see our sprinkler head. In our greenhouse, we actually water from overhead. Uh, so right. everything's getting wet. The uh -huh. flowers are getting wet. The leaves are getting wet. But right. this root system right here helps determine how awesome your plant will be. Yeah. Some just have bigger, better roots than others. Like here's a little miniature. This little plant here is just as old as that. Uh -huh. And it blooms three and four times a year. And no, it doesn't have roots like that. But for this little plant, these are awesome, awesome. roots. Yeah, right. So you'll learn the differences in some of these. But this is just as old. So the fans are on in here because after you water, you water today. Yes. And by the night, they really need to be dried off. So it's because we're in a climate controlled area here. Yeah. So with the greenhouse, I'm like a fishbowl. I'm yeah. getting algae on the door handles. Right, you know? yeah, right. So if you have it outside, you don't have to worry in Florida. Right, gotcha. <laughs> or summertime elsewhere. You know. Gotcha. But in this house, you've got to get them dry. In off. the greenhouse. So yeah, I've right. got the fans blowing. This was watering day. Right. Tomorrow I won't water, and I won't have to run the big fans. Right. How? So fertilizer. Ah, yeah. great okay. question. Mm -hmm. The fertilizer will match your shirt. You <laughs> need a 20-20-20 all-purpose water soluble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And it looks aqua colored. Mm -hmm. And um, you use that as the main diet. Now there's a little trick mm -hmm. if you're. It, some folks, that's enough. That's all they're going to fool with. But yeah. when they're close to blooming and you reduce that first number, that nitrogen, down yes. to a 10, yeah. and you increase the second number, the phosphorus, to 30, yes. it kind of gives it this little, oh, you know, something's happening. Yeah. I better make a flower so I can make uh, a seed gotcha. pod. And we can show you a seed pod. Yeah. Um, and then you just give it its 20, 20, 20 the following. So a 10, 30, 20 is the bloom booster. Right. And if it was near blooming, you boosted it maybe with that fertilizer right. and keep it right on track and keep it going. And just once a week? Or once, once a week is the most. Weekly but weekly is what okay, they gotcha, say. Gotcha. And um, you would want, on our guys, you would want a pump up sprayer because you got some big fat roots here. You've got to get right. saturated. Right, just trying to get it saturated. And if you're going spritzy, spritzy, you might only see how strong your finger is. You'll you give up. You'll say, I'm tired of it. Right. You got them, if you got a little pump up sprayer, like the bug man uses, uh -huh. then you just go to town and go at it. Or something like this, maybe you could do it with your trigger finger, but a right. pump up sprayer still works good. So orchids have a very interesting uh, way to spread to, to, to spread their uh, pollen, right? To, well, they can't do it on their own, so right. they have to rely on an insect yes. to come in. So here comes Mr. Moth, Mr. Bug, Mr. Butterfly. He lands right there and he falls in love. He's like, hey, baby. Mm -hmm. And he is tricked by her. The little eyes are actually the pollen. Mm -hmm. So then he realizes she doesn't love me. So she's going to fall in love over here. Mm -hmm. And see that little face looking at him? There goes the pollen right up in the air. 
there's it looks like two little tennis balls there right there mm -hmm. and that what makes its way up in there bada bing bada boom it'll become a seed pod okay and this takes a while to develop and there's seed are tiny that was probably pollinated about three weeks ago okay but in the world of collector plants oh yes you, you this this is not of no really yeah, no value because it, because sad. people want named cultivars yeah, have to know the, the award-winning named cultivars all orchids in there. are registered in england so we know okay. who the pod parent is gotcha but who was the pollen that came traipsing in there right so but if you're wanting to make a brand new hybrid mm -hmm. and you go well let me think well let's put this red with this yellow what are uh -huh. we gonna get it's like putting brad pitt and angelina jolie together yeah, right. we're gonna have awesome kids <laughs> and so this is very important so you right. tag it you put the date on it right and you pray it gets to where it's ready Right. that takes about six months uh -huh. and so then if you're a grower you'll harvest that and it takes a little incubator mm -hmm. with this goopy stuff called agar and you bottle it and put yeah. it under lights in america and thailand they put it on the back porch yeah, right. and so you wait about a year mm -hmm. it's called flasking and now you'll have little bitty bean sprouts growing in this little milk bottle on its side yeah. you break that and you put about a hundred of them in a little pot and that's called a community pot yeah. another year or two go by Mm. And anything could happen during that time. That's why we don't flask. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, one night could take them away from a freeze, yeah, or they right. overheat and croak, or they get a bacteria, right. and they're all gone, and they're all your time. So anyway, then eventually they start putting them in their own little baskets, and that's how they get their new ones that get judged, and right, right. they'll become cloning those. So right. we do a lot of Maristim cloned orchids. We know what we're getting, right. and like you can see, these are identical. And we right. know, I can tell you if that's just little buds, like here, these ones just opening up here. I can right. tell you exactly what that's going to look like. It's going to look like those peachy ones over there. But when it's from a seed pod, you're, you're trying to see who's Miss Alabama and who's Miss Florida and who's <laughs> going to win the prize. <laughs> so the fragrance in here is amazing. Some are fragrant, but not all. Right. Uh, and it's just incredibly beautiful in here. Definitely worth the trip. Uh, to, to see you. Uh, oh, I hope so. Thank yeah. you. And you'll teach folks how to grow them, oh. or you have a handout. You have a handout. I made this little handout years ago, and it's, yeah. it's served its purpose. They end orchid growing, and this is mainly in Florida, right? And for dummies, but that's these other people that were here, <laughs> and not you guys at all. Right. But anyway, because some people really say orchids are so hard. You say orchids, and ah, these are so easy, right. especially here in Florida. So the number one question at mm -hmm. shows or people, they come in mm -hmm. here first, they look at it. I swear to you, this one gentleman at the door said, how deep of a hole do I have to dig? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you don't have to. <laughs> so then they say, how do you water this thing? Uh -huh. So in your, in your um, yard or your patio, right. you just use the garden hose just to hose it down. Hose it down. Literally if it's hose hanging it down. out under a tree, like uh -huh. I, I think we showed you one, that your sprinkler system can get it too. Right, and gotcha. then, of course, God rains on it for you. There's one more thing, though, that's a secret. Mm -hmm. but a lot of gardeners know it is super thrive right, and it's right. a vitamin hormone treatment and you mm -hmm. add that once a month right. and if you're swapping out to a bloom booster which is once a month as well it's mm -hmm. a good time to add it together gotcha. and you've got it in your tank and you're just mixing along and right. that if if it's you know the color it'll be it'll be the best color it is the super thrive helps with the vigor of the plant and right. if you got a green healthy plant with great roots you're going to have great flowers and the quantity so right. if you don't feed and you don't do those kind of things, you might get four flowers where we get right. five or six or sometimes double spikes, right, which is yeah. really great. Um, and then where should you put it? So that's a big question. Right. And uh, here in Florida, a lot of people are building what they call bird cages, uh -huh. okay. which is you yeah. don't have the pool, but you've got the cage. Right. These are high light orchids. So of all the orchids, these take the most light and they'll take the most heat. Mm -hmm. So you just hang it on something out there and use your hose to hose it and yeah. they're great. Right. Um, but uh, under a tree or a pergola where you can get some broken filtered light coming in, right. you need some light to keep it blooming like it should on schedule. Right. Um, if you've got a dark green healthy vanda and it hadn't bloomed all year, you got to move it. Gotcha. You got to get it to where you can get some gotcha. light. And then my last thing on the sheet is how do you repot it? You don't. <laughs> right. you need, it doesn't need a pot. <laughs> you saw that monster when it's still in that size basket right there. Right. So Amazing. You don't need a pot. Amazing. Well, thank you for hosting us. You're very welcome. Glad you could yes. come. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Goodwin Orchids in Leesburg, Florida, and I'll link the website down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Great. Thank you.